I went from being a fighter mm -hmm. to a teacher. Right. I didn't realize that I could become a good teacher because all I thought about was fighting. So I'm like that pit bull just jumping in the ring and going crazy, you know? Yeah. Fox, on the other hand, is a lifestyle hub. It made me go out of my comfort zone and go, damn, I need a bigger space. Oh, yeah, it's go so time. So I went and looked for my own space. But nobody knew and nobody saw what was coming. Yeah. You know? I was they didn't see the vision. moving. Nobody God saw the vision. God gave you the vision. They didn't exactly. Give it to Get your value system. Get your belief system. Put that together. Find your negatives. Turn them into positives. As a man, you look at yourself in the mirror and you find out what's wrong. Right. The day that you realize what you're doing wrong is the day that everything will change for yourself. I have no fear, Mr. Organic is here. This is Organically Speaking. Anybody out there want to do partnership, sponsorship, clothing, brand marketing, you know, water, energy drink placement, whatever you want to be a part of Organically Speaking or Mr. Organic as a brand, hit me up at ballornothingelse at yahoo.com. That's my email. Or DM me directly at Mr. Organic on Instagram. That's M-R Organic with a K instead of a C. One word straight across. And we're going to get that promo game through the roof. Three, yeah. Have no fear, have no fear, Mr. Organic is here. And this is Organically Speaking. Now, let's get some understanding here. I only have one of the ones individuals in the Organically Speaking studios. And this is a historical guy, you know, professional boxer, you know, a philanthropist, you know, entrepreneur, a motivator, inspirator, and just all around legendary individual. We got Mateo, a boxer. Talk to me, brother. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for having me oh, on. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me, brother. Nah, thank you, thank you. It's an honor to be on your podcast. I see you doing your thing. It's yeah. blowing up. Yeah. I'm very, um, I'm flattered to be here and also good to see that, you know, like men like yourself and like-minded people are just, you know, they want to be the best at what they can do. Right. And what you're putting together is great. You know, like talking to all different individuals from yeah. all different backgrounds, but all have the same like-minded mentality, right? For sure. So being here today, man, I appreciate you. Man, I appreciate you um, coming. Like, it was, you know, love from day one. As soon as I came sure. to Miami, the first place I went was your gym. It's world-renowned, you know what I'm saying? Not yeah. only just the look of it, the aesthetics, but just the energies in there. Yeah. And then when I ran into you, I'm like, oh, that's where it came from. It came from the source. It's the owner. You and your, um, your um, business partner. So it's like... Okay, this is a place I could be every day, and I've been there ever since. So I appreciate the hospitality. And let's start from the beginning, man. Like, where did you come from? Like, where did you start? Let's get that understanding. We already know from the accent. I got that kangaroo accent. Yeah, yeah, definitely got All the, the kangaroo way from Australia, you know? I've been <laughs> yeah. hopping out here in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Legendary, for sure. So, um, yeah, originally born and raised in Sydney, Australia. Um, been boxing for, damn, since I was 13 years old. Yeah. Traveled the world. Uh, been around some of the best fighters in the world, been in some big major competitions. Boxing basically saved my life, bro. Um, yeah. So it all starts with that. I, I give thanks to the sport of boxing. If it wasn't for it, I wouldn't be here today and I wouldn't maybe be alive here today. So I really look back at it as, you know, coming from a family as an only child, no brothers, no sisters, no one to really depend on. Um, I only have my mother and father, but then, you know, people out there that are only childs can relate to what I'm trying to say is that you start to figure out life by yourself. You start to figure out things by yourself and you start to lead the way in so many different ways that you would not ever expect. Uh, because having siblings is great. And I, I actually do. I wish I had brothers and sisters. But at the same time, it's it's a blessing in disguise because then I had to figure things out myself. Yeah. And that's why I am where I am today. And that's why I'm able to do the things I can do because I experience things alone. I experienced things from traveling around the world and having to figure it out the way I need to. When your back's against the wall all the time, you have to figure it out. And that's how you grow. And that's how you build momentum. And that's how you build knowledge. And that's how you have growth is because you're constantly under pressure. We spoke about that before. You right. have to love the pressure. Yeah. And you can't be dependent on everyone else around you. So you have to figure it out. But at the same time, when you do find that person that you think is valuable and you think that that person can bring value into your, into your life and nourish your life, then coming as an only child, you, you bro, that that's a big deal because whoever that person is or whoever relationships you make, like we have a good relationship, mm -hmm. bro, I got you all the time because right. that's special, that relationship, because you, you never experienced it as a child growing up. Yeah. But now it's like, damn, you're my brother, bro. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's, it's very different. Right. So, Growing up, coming from Australia, um, I left, I went to Colombia. I lived in Colombia for like a year, year and a half. I, I had a switch off and I had to recap on my life. And um, I came to Miami. I met my business partner, Cami. Big shout out to Cami. You already know she's yeah, the queen of boxer. Yeah, Without her, different. I wouldn't be here today. Facts. Um, you know, and that's the beauty about having uh, an amazing partnership as well. You know, there's understanding her weaknesses and my strengths. 
and vice versa. And that's why it works. And that's the same thing in every relationship that I've built, you know, like those relationships that I've built, I've been able to pro provide positive value to them and whatever weaknesses they got, I bring the strengths and it goes back and forth. That's real relationships. Cause that's how you grow, you know? And then coming to Miami, um, back was against, uh, back again, uh, back was against the wall yeah. in COVID had my apartment at the filing station it was two level loft apartment. I decided to train clients and training clients was something that, you know, I went from being a fighter mm -hmm. to a teacher. Right. I didn't realize that I could become a good teacher because all I thought about was fighting. So I'm like that pit bull just jumping in the ring and going crazy, you know, yeah. but then the tables turned and I thought, well, let me try teaching. And you know what? I was actually better at teaching than fighting, even though I'm a good, I'm still, I got my hands, but you see yeah, me you in the ring. Got yeah. yeah, if I want to get back in, I can get back in For right sure. now. But I like being a teacher. Yeah. I like giving the knowledge that I've acquired over such a long period of time from some of the best masters of the sport of boxing. And I can deliver that and give it to others that really deserve it or really want it, you know, yeah. and want to put in that hard work. And I get fulfilled by seeing the results. And that's why Boxer is where it is today, because myself and Cami, we want to see the results. We want to see people like yourself go in there. And that's to fill in that void of your life that you love to be inside a boxer. Mm -hmm. You want to train, you want to be around that lifestyle. You want to be around that network. All of that is part of our daily life routine. And all we want to do is see the results from the people, which means we have to provide value, which means we have to add nitrous oxide to the tank always. Yeah. And that's the only way it's going to work. And you have to do it honestly, genuinely, and you can't fumble this shit and just be like, yeah, I got a gym and I'm going to put equipment in it and let itself run itself. Right. Because that's what a gym is. Right. But we ain't a gym, we a brand. Mm, that's different. That's the difference. Very important. We a movement, we a culture, we a community. Mm-hmm. We have the best of the best and we have people coming in that are inspired by that, which means that the system works, right. but you got to keep that same consistency running and you got to keep adding that nitrous oxide to the fuel in order to keep it alive. If you stop and you come off that, bro, the car is going to be a regular Honda. Right. And we know we don't like that. Not we know Lam it's Lambos. It's not, Lambos. Not the Lambo I brought in yesterday. Oh, I seen that too, the Revolto. Oh, I they know got you, like that you one. know I like I know that you one, like sir. That one. That's a different type of, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, relic. It's the only one in the world that sits inside of a facility, a Come gym on, facility. Come on, man. You, Come on. You so you got to give them the understanding of the inspiration you put behind your gym. Because, yes, when people walk in that gym, it's, it's more than just working out. It's a lifestyle. It is. And I know that was purposeful while you have the cars there, while you got it looking the way it looks. Can you explain that? It's more than just gym. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, man. So, look, like I said, a gym, if we want to call it gym, is a gym, which means it's a warehouse with equipment in it. And people just go work out by themselves. They listen to music. And they just have an ordinary routine. Box, on the other hand, is a lifestyle hub, which means you're coming to a place where as soon as you walk through those doors, no matter whether you're feeling down, no matter whether you just closed a deal, no matter whether you, you, know, you lost your woman or your man, it don't matter. The energy don't lie. Energy is everything. So be able to create energy in an environment space, it, it doesn't just happen. You either got it in you to create it in your environment space or you don't. You either right. got it or you don't. It's one of the two. Now, it comes down to the head, myself and Cami, mm -hmm. and then it comes up to the team. Your customer service is everything. You want to walk into the doors and you could be having a bad day, bro, and you lost some money or you, you hit your car or whatever. Yeah. You want to make sure that that person at the front desk brings, you, you, brings your energy up. I always do. And, and that's the most important thing. So point of entry, you walk in, you're like, oh, I want to work. Yeah. I hear that music in the background. You know, I, see, I, I see I see the women. I see the oh, men. There's a, a lot of women there now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We know that's your topic. You know that. Yeah. But we, you know what I mean? We'll get into that we'll after. Get that. You walk in, you, you see the Lamborghini. Ooh. You see the change of vehicles. You see the lights. You see the, you see the cameras out. You see the rings. You see the professional fighters. Yeah. You, see, you see high influential people in there. You see the boxing section. You see the leg room. You see the basketball court. So when you're really walking in, is it really a gym? Right. No, no. it's not. And then you see everybody working hard, hard, yeah. everyone's sweating, everyone putting that extra work going more and beyond. And then that's what rubs off onto you when you walk into that hub, yeah. it's a hub. And then people connect and then people meet. And right. then, this is really a network hub. 
is not a gym. 100%. You, so, you will run into anybody there on, a, on any given day. Like, and then it's real genuine, like, situations and relationships you get from there. Like, sure. I, met, I met so many people that I probably would never met in life that I met there that already knew me or whatever, and, or people I never knew or didn't know me, but yeah. now they know me just from being in that gym. And just by being around, like, you don't know half the people, but they'll dab you up and be like, what's up, bro? And right. you feel that energy and connection. Yep. And that's always like that. And that's the consistency that we bring. We want that to happen because our goal is, it's not about the fitness side, but it's more about the overall lifestyle side. We want to continue to bring that consistency of that energy, of those relationships, of bringing the best of the best in bringing more value, bringing more machines, bringing more locations, expansion. That's all part of the process of why it is where it is today. Right. And why you enjoy going. For sure. Because it keeps you alive. You want to be entertained. It's like watching a movie. You don't want to be bored. Right. You, you want know? to keep it going. You have to entertain people. People yes. like entertainment. So part of what we do is we want to entertain you guys always. We'll give our tickets to fights. We'll say, hey, we'll give you a free 12-month membership. If you can guess what car's coming in today, right. this and that. That's that's what it's about when it comes to the business side of things. You yeah. have to entertain the people. Most definitely. And and you know? just like the people that come in there, they, they understand that. They yeah. come there for that. People yeah. come from out the country. Like I go there so much and I post on there because it's, it's all love. But it's like I don't have people come from Africa. Yeah. that visit Miami like yeah. I came to Boston to see if you was here or again I got ran into you like what the f yeah. like that's how real it is so the connection is out super succeeds even the gym because sure. it's a lifestyle so it goes to real life yeah and that's the beauty of boxer so when you first got into it you said you started into in your apartment yeah and then you brought the, the warehouse like how was that transition from boom to bam so, so you know like a lot of people say you know like I like to plan things you know for, for myself and Cammy, we didn't plan it we just worked hard and, and when you work hard at towards your craft and what you're really good at and you put 120% into what you believe in, the plan, sometimes your plan is not always going to go the way you want it. Yeah. You got to leave that in God's hands or you got to leave it to whatever you believe in. But in the end of the day, you got to stay consistent and motivated to be on your topic. Stop dabbling in like a hundred different things. <laughs> right. Figure it out what you're good at and what you want. And that's what I did. I went back to the roots and that was, that was my boxing, Right. but on the other end of teaching and then from teaching, being an entrepreneur and throughout our process, you know, we turned our condo into a boxing facility. I put a ring in the living room. We put bags on the second level. I put an ice plunge. I, I use the name. The boxer name comes all the way from Australia. That was my fight name. Okay. And then, uh, Cammy, my business partner, she created the logo. Dope. We put our heads together. And from there on, it just, it, it exploded. So three months of being up there, I ended up um, moving to another gym, which was next door. Okay. I don't want to give them too much love because if I drop their name, they're going to get, yeah, you know. Yeah, you ain't going to give nah, too much. Yeah, this is all, this is I give them a little bit, Yeah, you but know, not but too much, right? They, That's organic. Yeah, can't yeah. give them too much, you no, know, fertilizer. And, and, and to be honest, respect to them because if they didn't give me the opportunity, we wouldn't be where we are today. So I, I don't want to be saying nothing bad, nothing, yeah. but it's, in the end of the day, each person has their own blueprint on, right. on how they run their business, right? So he gave me an opportunity. Uh, him and her gave me an opportunity. We built that up for eight months, gained 450 members in eight months that were paying 100 bucks a month. Mm. You know, didn't know how to run a business, just knew how to teach. Right. So I went from teaching to building classes to running now a gym, a boxing gym. Yeah. I was running the classes. My girl was running the um, the managerial side of things. Okay. And, and so we worked together, put our heads together, and it worked. Yeah. And so from there onwards, I got pushed out. Okay. So being pushed out, yeah, not on bad terms, but just because they needed more space. Of course. It made me go out of my comfort zone and go, damn, I need a bigger space. Oh, yeah, it's go so time. So I went and looked for my own space. But nobody knew and nobody saw what was coming. Yeah. You know, I was They didn't see the vision. Moving. Nobody God saw gave the vision. You the vision. They didn't give it exactly. A damn. Yeah, he had to show them. So we saw we we found the space. I walked in and I'm a visionary, so like I get very creative with things. And when I walked in, I envisioned exactly what it looks today. When you go to a fight night at MGM Grand, mm -hmm. it's electrifying. The lights, the rings, the, the entrance for fighters, whatever. So the whole pathway, when you walk through Boxer, it feels like you're coming out of a dressing room, you go into the ring. Yeah. You know, that ambience feeling. And mm -hmm. that's what was part of the vision. And so when we put our heads together on the design aspect, we're like, nah, we don't want it to be a regular gym. 
We want it to be a lifestyle hub where people walk in and can relate to everything that we're putting in here. They can relate to champions. Mm -hmm. They can relate to the high value in detail in a vehicle. You know, people go, oh, it's stupid to put a Lamborghini or Ferrari. But guess what, bro? You know how much work goes into that vehicle for it to be priced at that value right. of where it's at? And not everyone can purchase it. Right but it's doable and you can get it for sure. But you just got to believe and manifest it and really go, yeah, I'm going to get that. Yeah. I'm going to work hard to get that. Cause it is doable. Facts. It's all part of that. So part of the gym, uh, part of the, part of the lifestyle facility, it's, it's about, it's all possible. You have freedom to be able to create whatever you want to create. Yeah. And so when we did that, it started from the boxing side and it expanded into the weight room. And I was like, you know what? Let's go all out with this. Yeah. Let's go all out. Let's t let's hit every demographic. Let's go all in. Let's do MMA. Let's do bodybuilding. You know what? Come here, bro. I'm, I want to have a meeting with you. How's your CrossFit gym doing? Uh -huh. Oh, it's okay. All right. I won't buy you out. Mm, give me that. I wrote the check. Boom. We Boom. took CrossFit across the road. Bang. Boom. Renovated that thing in like two weeks. With the barbershop upstairs. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, we got to get our cuts, bro. Mm. We need a man cave. We need people to relax. Yeah. Let's build a barbershop up. Nasty. You know? And then let's put the pool tables and then let's do this. And then now let's take the feet. Let, let, let's get the land and build a soccer field and a football pitch. Uh -huh. All right. And now today let's, you know what? The doghouse is cool, but hey, we, we got to expand. Let's put a private facility now. And that's what we're currently building mm, now. I so saw like, y'all got the doghouse yeah, next door. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Boxer's signature coming soon. Oh, that's next level. That's for... That's for the uh, uh. yeah for me type man. Like, nah, that's hard. that's for everyone. But at the same time, it's really like I have a lot of fighters that want to do private um their private camps of and course. they can't get disturbed. So we got to keep cameras out. Yeah, that the main facility right now can't, can't sustain that because everyone want to take photos of and course, videos. You know, stars in there. They want to be part of the game. You so, know what I'm saying? So part of it is like, all right, we're gonna build out a private facility for celebrities, athletes, uh, fighters that are getting ready for big fights and camps. Um, and it's just going to be a space where, you know, these guys will come in and they'll have the full treatment where they get towel service, they get drinks, they get whatever they want to fulfill that session. It's all inclusive. Legendary. But I'll get into that another time. When yeah, yeah, once yeah, it's ready. That's going to come. You but know? I already seen the vision. I saw you playing that out. So and people don't understand the brilliance of having that car there, because just like in life. Being in the gym, working out, you do that with your own two hands. Yeah. Whatever you want to build for yourself, you can, but it takes 100%. hard work, pain. You got to eat right. You got to be consistent. That's what you do with business. 100%. So the same energy you put into your body, you could put into your monetary gains to get those cars. 100%. So only a select few could get it, but the ones that do, they understand the beauty of seeing that car every day. Because once I get my body right, then I could jump in that car, and now I'm really immortalized. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the com combination that's I the beauty see. about it. Yeah, that's yeah. the beauty you see, because with your own two hands, you can do anything. Yeah, if you could change your body from this to that. You could change your income from this to that. So it's the connection. Saying. It's a beautiful thing. So boom, you built the whole facility. Marvelous. You add the barbershop. You're making it a whole lifestyle. You get in the doghouse. How far and how big do you see? I know you got that billion dollar vision. Mm. So I know you're talking about different cities and states. What next city you think you want to take your um your facilities to? Man, I've had I've had many choices. I've had many opportunities. I've had proposals come to me. Sometimes you know when it really comes down to it. You, we we want to move fast, you know. Right. But we also got to be very logical and strategic on how, how we choose what we want to do. Because at the same time, when you're building a brand, you have to cover all corners of the brand. Right. And make sure that it, f it goes in the right direction. Because I've seen brands, they grow too fast or they make the wrong decision. It's just a pump and it flops. Yeah. For us... You know, I'm not trying to franchise anything right now. We, we're trying to get like three major flagships first. Okay. Once we get those three major flagships locked and loaded, they're going to be destination hubs. Mm. Just like when you go to Disneyland. Yeah. You know, people people fly in a box already into Most Miami definitely. just for a day pass. Most definitely. You know, or they come and they spend three weeks or two weeks and then they fly out. So it's become that destination hub. Our goal is to get four locations, flagships locked in, and then we'll see about going franchising and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Something I want to add to it, you know, in order to build something amazing like this, right. it comes down to your network system. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Some of the biggest names that I started off with, big shout out to my brother, Steve Stout, owner shout of United Steve Masters. Stout. Yeah. You know, he, uh, he really believed in me. He was one of my first clients. Um, at that time, you know, these guys were just giving me 30 bucks, 40 bucks. This was three and a half, four years ago. Wow. 50 bucks. That's yeah. how much I was charging. Mm, right. Wow. And, um, and that was because I decided to 
continue to build the value of the relationship rather than taking the money. I didn't care for the money because I knew with that relationship, it would help me build as a man because they're giving me something and I'm giving them something. Right. And so in exchange up to today, those relationships have become my strongest relationships and strongest allies. I could call him right now and be like, Hey bro, how you doing? You good? And have a good conversation and ask him for advice and be like, look, I'm building a studio out. How do you think I, I, I should go about this? And this is, and that. he'll give me the advice. That's beautiful. You know, Some people like to grab pennies and they miss out on the dollars. That's correct. You know what I'm saying? Cause they be so greedy for the now they don't play in game and they're not really trying to build a real relationship. And that's a problem with people cause they want instant gratification 100%. instead of that delayed gratification where the real glory comes from. So you taking those, small amounts of money to build that equity in a relationship paid off dividends at the end. And in the end of the day, that money, you know, like that was to just put food in my mouth and right. for my, you know, for my partner and everything. And, you know, through that period too, like coming out here, I didn't even know how half these people were. So I'll give you an example. Like I had this guy call me. He's like, yo, I got Debo Samuel from the 49ers. I'm like, who? And he's like, Debo Samuel. But yeah. All right. Tell him to come. I'll train him for a bit. I didn't know who the hell the guy was, right. but I treated all of them like that. Beautiful. And they liked it like that. And then when I found out who they were, I was like, oh, that's cool, bro. You know, respect to you, this and that. And I developed powerful relationships that have led me to where I am today. Right. Part, of, part of the story, what I'm trying to say is that when you're building, not all relationships are going to be good. Right. You got to choose carefully those relationships and the ones that are valuable and that you both are nourishing each other to grow on different levels. And it might not be right now, right. but it may be later down the track. You mm -hmm. never know who that person may be able to help you with what you're trying to do. Or maybe you might end up doing a huge business deal that you never even realized, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like part of that process was where we're at today is relationships, your network system. And now it's being able to go onto a whole different level where, Hey, we got New York, we got Las Vegas, we got Saudi Arabia and Riyadh. So yeah. it's like, the doors Sky's are the open limit. now. Sky's you know? the limit because you built the brand and that's what people got to understand. Like, that same thing, I mean, one of the ones see that behind you, um, organically speaking, I put millions of dollars into my name and my brand 100%. and I was willing to risk it all to get it all. And if I'd have lost it all, so be it. But I have no fear in whatever I do. That comes from, you know what I'm saying, building a clothing brand that's come from entrepreneur, this comes from doing a podcast. I 100%. have no fear. I'm going to put it all in because I believe. So that's what you did. Betty. So people are gravitated to that. 1,000. You know what I'm saying? Or resonates to different type of ores that resonate the same. Sh you bet it on yourself. Always. You have to. That's the person you bet yeah. on. Because God only make you, only one of you is yeah. there. So how you depending on somebody else, you already f up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to bet on me every time. Yeah. And I'm going to win. And of course, you still need like-minded individuals to build with because you only go so far by yourself. So when you got people that got that same energy, stick to them and do them right. Have integrity. You know what I'm saying? Have that open communication with people. You don't want to burn no bridges by being thirsty or being greedy. For you sure. know what I'm saying? You want to be genuine. And that's what I see with you guys there, Boston. So what was like, Steve Style was a big guy. Who's the first person that really came there that was like, man, I got this person in my gym. I had Steve Stout. I had DJ swearing her. I had Hector Lombard. I had, um, who else? Who else? I had Jet McKinnon. Mm -hmm. I had Matt Bree from the, um, he was playing for the Dolphins at the time. I had Taurine Prince, basketball player, yep. TP. He plays for the Lakers right now. Um, bro, these were all guys when I was really starting at the beginning and the list goes on. And in between all that, bro, like while I was training them, I was doing classes for the people. You right. know, I was there for the people. Always. Myself and Cami are there to cater to the people. We are a servant before anything. Even though we lead in what we do, you know, we, we're not trying to be dictators here. We shepherds. Mm. It's different. That's different. You either want to be a leader or a shepherd. Young Moses or you want to be the Pharaoh. Which one? Exactly. Yeah. So... Part of us, you know, even me right now today, look what I'm wearing, bro. I come Chilling. on here just like I come Marshall out of the Duck. fucking ring, you know? So yeah, it's yeah. like, we, we, we very transparent on how we do things. We, more importantly, you know, the most important thing is, bro, like we give love to the people always and we try to keep it as real as possible and we want everyone to be happy, bro. Yeah. You walk in, you walk out, that's it. You, you, you've moved forward. You gained, you got growth. There is results in every aspect, not just from the training aspect, but from the mental aspect, from the spiritual aspect, because this is what we surrounded by. We surrounded by greatness. You walking in, David Benavides in the ring training. Every day. Yeah, uh, every you seen day. it? Yeah. Crazy. You know what I mean? Amazing. So it just shows like, we don't go out and look for it. We attract it. Right. And there's a difference. You can either chase it or you can attract it. Mm. Attracting it, 
That's hard work. Yeah. Because you, you're putting in all this work without having to go outside your cave to go and look for it. Beautiful thing. They're just coming. Yeah. And so if they're coming, how are you going to treat it? Right. You're going to welcome them in with open arms. Most definitely. And the whole thing. I'm going to give you a little story right now. Let me hear it. Floyd Money Mayweather. Big Money Mayweather. Come on, man. You already know what's up with Floyd. Oh, for sure. TBE. TBE. That's my guy. All right. One of my dreams was when I was a kid, I went to the Roy Jones Jr. and Antonio Tava fight. I saw my all-time great Roy Jones Jr. get dropped by Tava in yeah, the second that was, round. that was hard. That was a hard that fight. That was hard. Yeah. I was 14, 15 years old, and I saw Floyd in his gray suit. I still remember. He had a white shirt. He had his big gray suit on with his glasses on. Mm -hmm. And my father said, yo, yo, come. Get a photo with Floyd. So I took a photo with Floyd. Right. And I looked up at Floyd. I'm like, one day, I'm going I'm, I'm to see you in the ring. I'm going to see you in a different situation. Right. Just remember my name. So... I left. Let's fast forward now. My old facility that we had right. at that gym, I get a call and the security guard came, spoke to me. He's like, yo, Floyd, want to come and use your gym? So I was like, all right, no worries. Yeah, come through. Comes through. He trains. He likes the old gym. He likes it a lot. Yeah. He felt the energy and he was in his zone, right? And so whilst he was training, I was watching. I'm like, damn, I got Floyd Money Mayweather inside of my gym wow. 13 years later. Right, up in person and close. So right. I go, okay, this is cool. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I let him do his thing. Uh -huh. We finish training, goes to the duffel bag. He's like, yo, come in, Mateo. I'm like, yeah. That, that hockey bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is where, I, bro, I'm not making money like that, but every cent right now counts because we're growing. You yeah, know, like, you I, need, all I, I need to pay for things. You're right. He goes to the duffel bag, pulls out money, and they're about to give me cash. Right. Most people would take it. For sure. I didn't take it. Mm. I put it back. I said, I grabbed his hand. I'm like, nah, Floyd, I can't take this, man. Wow. I go, it's just an honor to have you present inside of my gym. This was my dream 13 years ago right. as a kid that I would meet you. Mm -hmm. And it actually happened today. But more importantly, you trained in my, in my gym. And that that's I worth built. more. Yeah. So straight from that conversation, my, my relationship with Floyd is high. Immaculate. Like I helped him for the last fight. I did the logistics on the Floyd Money May with a Gotti fight. And um, he did his camps at my gym. He was the first one to step foot into the new facility that you train at right now. So Most definitely. he was the first one in there when it was under dust and there was just a ring. We took off the plastic and he was training in there. They brought all the vehicles in, all the cars into the gym where the, where the, um, the leg room is, where we You're bring right, the cars. The backside, yeah. Bro, they came in with the Maybachs and everything in dust. Yeah. And he put his gear on, jumped in the the ring shadow box uh. and he was smiling having fun and stuff and i looked and i was like damn bro this is a dream come true for me right now this is better than actually meeting him if i was in the ring and i became champ right because he coming back and forth all the time and now i have a personal relationship so that just tells you bro like if you know how to move with certain people without being greedy about looking at the inside of money and what they're worth and all these types of things. And you think about the bigger picture on how you can create those strong, effective relationships, yeah. brother, you gotta move faster than ever. You gotta move fast as light because it works. That system there works if you know how to treat it correctly. Right. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be strategic. We're not playing checkers here, we're playing chess. For sure. Big time. So pick your moves correctly. Pick your moves right, man. You know, I tell them, I play I play poker out here, man. You don't know what I got, I know what you got, but I believe you got a lot. I know I got a lot too. Let's play. Who gonna yeah. pick up all the chips? You know what I'm saying? Let's pick up all the chips. Exactly. And, and, and relationships is priceless. You know, money comes and goes, but yeah. a real relationship. That could be forever. Brother. And not only the person, but you're talking about their family, family, you can lie, and that could go, you know, eternity. For but sure. people, like I said, they're so short sighted. They want that now. And it, and it really messes up a lot of relationships, a lot of things in life. Yeah, for but sure. But when you chase that end game, man, it's a beauty in that. And I, and I see that what you're doing because, like I said, you built a brand. You didn't make a gym. So I see the even the clothing look right. Everybody wear it in the gym, you know, so it expands. You know, like people excited to wear it. It's, it's like your brand right now. When, yeah. when I see your brand, I put a face to it. Right. You. For sure. But if you weren't present, that ain't a brand. Right. It's very hard to, to relate to. You need to relate to something or someone. Mm -hmm. That's why when we say Nike, who's the first athlete, athlete you think of? Michael Jordan. Of course. There you go. Yeah. You can't think of anyone else. Right. You know, so that's how, like, that's how branding is done. Yes. And so 
that's how we started. There's a face. There's two faces to this. There's myself and there's, and there's my woman because she represents the, the the female side and to the people and my Just side. Just strong, yeah. You put it together, yeah, you have She got made. hands too. I saw she was- <laughs> Oh, she got hands. Yeah, I see I that. I got a teacher. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. <laughs> Gotta be careful, bro. <laughs> I see that. I'm like, okay, she can box too. And yeah. yeah, that's dope because people are very comfortable in that gym. You're like, you got top level influencers, yeah, yeah. you got top level boxers, but people have a good time. And you allow people, you know, to film and get their content. You know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing. How did you and God, you and uh, Benny Vidas get your relationship? Because he did this whole basically camp at your gym this time, which is legendary. So, so the story goes like this. And, um, you know, like I've been able to track some of the world's greatest fighters to the facility. Every legend has walked in through that gym from the UFC to boxing. And it, it actually happened by surprise where he texted me on Instagram and we connected. And then Jason Ingwalson, the faith fighter, yeah. the one that holds the mitts and stuff. Yeah. That's my guy. Mm -hmm. He trained Ryan Garcia. He trained Benavides back in the day. So we connected through IG and whatever. Dope. And he came down. He was coming out here to get an apartment mm -hmm. in Miami as an investment and then fly back out to Seattle. Right. Surely enough, he comes to the gym. We meet up. And he loved the vibe. He loved the gym. He enjoyed, you know, training with me and Jason. And so we connected. One night we go out. And we have some dinner. So we're talking here to there, whatever. And then I show him a picture. I'm like, bro, I was here at this gym like when I was a kid and then he pulled up a video and he said, yo, hang on a second. He goes, is that you? And I'm like, yeah, bro. How do you know? And he's like, wow. yo, that's me. And I was like, yo, we used to train together at the ages of 14 and 15. We were the wow. youngest two guys out of that gym. And he's, he started describing me. He said, yo, you used to wear your white sneakers and your white long socks and your yeah. big baggy shirt. And still to today, I'd be wearing my white sneakers and white. Yeah. And I was like, wow, what a trip out. How we reunite after all this time. Right. So that's what actually made us come closer together. That makes sense. And then he saw what Miami was about and he saw what the gym was about and how everyone's hustling and working and, and grinding. And he's like, man, I need to be around this. I can't, I can't go back to Seattle and just go back to that boring sort of life of just right. training and then home. No, I want to be around ambitious people. Right. I want growth. I want this. I want that. So he ended up doing his camp at, at the, um, for, for his last fight, got a success win yes, over that. Yeah. Legendary. Um, we trying to get, you trying to get the Canelo fight, but you already know what's up with that. Oh yeah. He's scared. Yeah. He's scared of that. You know oh, what I'm saying? Man. You know, but, but David is one hell of a, uh, human being, bro. Yeah. Like apart from him being a great boxer, Bro, he's got a good soul, great heart. That's my brother. Um, he's getting ready for another fight that's coming up soon. He's going to announce it probably in the next couple of weeks. So we back in the grind mode. Yeah, historical. Um, but it's just funny how life works, how, you know, the, things align yeah, without you even realizing. Yeah. You, you work hard at your craft and what you do, and, and then all of a sudden we're in the same spectrum and it just brings you back. Yeah, it happens that way. Because, like, like, I've seen him because we, we're in the same building. Yeah, that's and, right. Um, I know, I know who he was. I'm being cool. You know, I'm, I'm somebody too. I be feeling like I ain't going to yeah, push my, yeah. but he was, he came to me though. So I'm saying he a genuine person, like organic. Yeah. He's like, I said, watch your show. I'm like, huh? He's like, yeah, he yeah, so, your show, bro. I'm like, damn, yeah. that's love. You know, cause he had to do that. Yeah. He'd be in the gym boxing. He'd see me training. He'd jump out the gym, out the ring. I mean, yeah, yeah. organic. I'm like, it's a real. Man. Not real. Yeah. Because a lot of these fighters, bro, they, they wouldn't go out of their way to even speak like that. Right. But for David, bro, he's he's super humble. He's all about the people, bro. For like sure. when we went to Vegas and he was doing press con, bro, we had to try and get him away from people because yeah. he was going up to every person right. and he was signing and taking photos, grabbing their phones, doing so. That just shows that that's the people's champ, bro. For like sure. he's making time for the people. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Genuine. Bro. You know, that's genuine. So what you think about the fight? Benavidez, Canelo, like ah, uh, bro, like I <laughs> I got my take. Like, look, can, uh, hats off to Canelo. He right. a champion. Yep. He 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 one of the greats, mm -hmm. and I get it. But in order to really really fill that gap uh -huh. to finish off, you gotta fight your your, your mandatory, bro. Yeah. Your mandatory for three years is David Benavides, brother. That's the fight that everyone wants to see, and he gonna make money. Right. Come on, bro. Canelo gonna make money. Look at this. David said he'll give up. The purse, uh -huh. he'll give up whatever pay-per-views are made. And he says, bro, just give me three, four million dollars and I'm happy you keep the rest. Mm, that's a big bad to give up. But it's the glory, though. You know what the, it's the glory. I want the glory. Because he knows he'll beat him. He's For like, man, sure. I need him. He's, he, I need to eat him up. Yes. And when somebody's like that, obviously, and they're going, well, hey, I'll take the three million, but you take everything else. You already know that that's a danger zone for oh, that man. Oh, you spooky, yeah, that's spooky. That's scary. Yeah. Why is this man just like, oh, I'll take the chips? Mm. Nah. 
He giving it all up because he know he's going to defeat him. And once you get that, see, that's unlimited. Once again, delay, delay gratification. If I took this, you know, try to fight for the nick and knack for this money right now in this yeah. one fight, win or lose, it's going to be, you know, bad. But if I just say take that, we're talking about 20 years from now, I'm going to be the man for the next 20 years winning all these fights. It's, 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 it, you know, like, as as far as I know, like, we all saw Floyd. Floyd Floyd is Floyd. But yes. Floyd fought the best, bro. He fought every single one. He saw, he Who fought, he didn't fight. Exactly. And he did what he had to do in the ring to win. So Most definitely. as much as you want to say bad things about Floyd, Floyd is a great boxer, and he was smart in the game of boxing. That's in, a, in, a, in, a, in and out the ring. In and out of the ring. And right. he fought everyone. Yeah. And, 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 and the top dogs always fight everyone. You had Zab Judah fight everyone. You so had Sugar did. Shane Mosley. You had Roy yep. Jones Jr. So it's like, in the end of the day, like who, who's really good for Canelo right now? The only person we can all think of is Benavides. Everyone knows it. It's Everyone not knows thought. it. They try to slide Croft in there. We know that's a dentist advantage. He's coming up way too much weight. We know that. We've seen that last fight. Exactly. So let's get some understanding. Let's get the big doll Super Bowl boxing match. He is the monster, bro. He's scared of the monster. Yeah, he's a big fucker, too, because I'm, I'm a big guy. But I'm like, damn, this you, you, you got to give it respect, too. Like, you know, Canelo can demand what he wants because sure. of where he sits. Mm -hmm. But you also got to be like, bro, you cop mad respect in your country and through through the world if you do take the fight on. Now, let's say you lose. Mm -hmm. Rematch clause. Yep. How big will that be next? Even bigger. But you know what the thing is? He believes he don't need the money because he worth like nine hundred million right yeah, now. Yeah, he got a big shit. He got the bag back. So, so when he can, write, he can money, fight miscellaneous guys, run up the bag all the way up to a billy, and then can circle back. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But you already got that much money, brother. You might go for the big but, glory. But, but I have a strong feeling after speaking with David. Yeah. Um, I, I can't talk on his behalf, but right. I, I believe the fight will happen at some point. Yeah. Um, it just comes down to a little bit of timing and right. how things maneuver on the business side of things, but. We just got to stay tuned, you know, and, and David got to keep working yeah. and get ready for some other big fights that are coming up and take over, bro. That's how it goes, though, because think about the Floyd Pacquiao. We wanted that five, six years before yeah. it happened, and it still became the biggest fight of all time. So when things are supposed to work how they're supposed to work, you just let it go. Exactly. Do your part, and your blessings going to meet you in the middle. You can't run from it. You can't try to rush it. Whenever it's supposed to happen, it will happen. No. And most likely in a couple years when that fight does happen, it's going to be even bigger because Benavidez be more, you know what I'm saying, up that, that scale of greatness and more stardom behind it, which is already huge. But the more eyes, the more wins he get, makes it even more glorious. Exactly. Canelo going to be ready. He's going to be ready. It's going to be a way bigger fight. So Ryan Garcia, I saw him in the gym. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, we <laughs> we got to break up this guy here. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. How so, do you feel about Ryan? Look, I think Ryan's a good dude, bro. Like, I, I think people misinterpretate him. Like, he, he's cool, but he obviously got his own things going on. He's right. fighting some demons and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you got to give props to him on the Haney fight. You know, we Ooh, all saw what happened. Legendary. Whether he did something or he didn't, we don't know to specifics. But at the same time, like, man, the, 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 the kid is... He's a great promoter. Yep. We all know that. When it comes to the business of boxing, you got to know how to promote. So he knows how to promote. Yep. When he came to boxing, he, he I actually got introduced uh, by Ryan through Floyd. Okay. So Floyd actually brought him to the gym one night. Uh, he said, yo, I got to introduce you to Mateo. You guys need to connect. This year, gym in Miami, whenever you come, da, da, da. So that's how it all sort of turned out. Relationships. Yeah. Relationships. There you go. So- Whenever he's in town, he comes and trains at the gym. We worked with him. Jason Ingwalson, the faith fighter, was actually mm -hmm. his coach. Okay. So uh, he was his coach before for his first 13 professional boxing fights. Um, they get along really, really well. I actually got him to hold some mitts in the ring yeah. for me. Yeah, um, I've seen it. Which was dope. You which seen that, that shit cracked? Uh, very much so. He he said go. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go. I'm going to throw right. him. For sure. Why you not? Know? Why I want to test my full, full capacity. <laughs> shit. And you did. Um, part of it is like, you know, you could just see that he's going through some personal things that Most he needs definitely. to deal with. But the boxing side of things, you know, and I could I could relate to this is that once you're a boxer, you know, you could try to leave it, but boxing will never leave you. Right. Which means when you go in the gym and you train, it's like your peace. Yeah. It's where you want to be. And and that's how you escape from reality. For sure. For boxers. Yeah. And that's why he came to Boxer. And it was something that, you know, we noticed when we were training with him and we were doing work, me and Jason, that he found an escape reality place where he could go into and be like, damn, I feel good being here. This is where I feel safe. This is where nobody can touch me. This right. is where, like, I, I, I belong, you mm -hmm. know. And, and so when we feel as though that we can support that and help that, no matter what he's going through, that's not our business, but right. – 
if we can be there to help in some sort of aspect that may be able to change something right. to be a positive rather than negative, then we're going to do it, bro. Because sure. we're here for the love of the sport, bro, and for yeah. the people. No matter what he did, it, it is what it is, yeah. you know? For sure. Like, it, it's just difficult, especially growing up. It's just like a kid star. He, that's what he was. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So he blew up his social media, but he's been a fighter his whole life, yeah, too. Yeah. So it's double. It's not like he just a person that was a social media guy that turned fighter. He's been yeah. fighting his whole life. Gets the best. So once those collide, you really become a superstar in and out the ring mm. at an early age yeah. all this women all this money it's difficult it's and difficult. you're getting hit in your f head all the time so you gotta always equate that too to being you know and, what I'm saying and, a and, you, and you're also on a level where you're meeting people that man it's like he, he in a world that we not even in too right you know so like in that world that we're talking about it's like it's dangerous too. Yes, you 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 falling into a level where it's like you're seeing things that you would never even think of seeing. Right, you're you're, you're listening to things that you sh you know you would ne never listen to. So it, it it scares you a little bit. Right, I want to go into too much of that, but. Facts. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you, you open know? up those portals of, of high level yeah. that most people would never fathom because you are at the 1% of 1% of the 1%. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So you get into that room and you're like, whoa, this is what really going on? And I got to go back outside and talk to regular people and I know yep. this in my brain? Yeah. Kind of f***s you up. Yeah. But in the day, man, I wish the best for him. Like yeah, I said, I had interactions with him. He was always cool, always calm. And uh, he's a man of the people too, in there playing he ball is. with people, talking to everybody. That, you know what I'm saying? Everyone that comes to that gym, no matter what athlete, superstar, or whoever it is, we've had some of the best soccer players in the world. Yep. You name it, bro. Reggaeton get, guys, everybody. But they get in with the people. Facts. My brother Lunai, who's a reggaeton mm -hmm. that's big coming up, bro. When he, when he comes from Puerto Rico, he in with the people training with Facts. us. You know, so it's like, that's what that space does. It allows you to be the person you want to be without feeling as though that there's a hundred cameras on your people saying, yo, take photos with me. Let's right. get photos. That don't happen in Boxer, bro. No. Why? Because it's how we set the tone from the beginning. We go, nah, man, you be the person you want to be in here. This is a freedom place. Yeah. Be, around, be amongst the people that, you know, relate to who you are. Yeah. You know? And so... It's nah, a beautiful man. thing, it's man. A beautiful and, thing. and people, anybody coming to Miami, I always recommend to come to Boston. Right. Um, it's it's I appreciate it. Because it, it, like we say, it's, it's not just a gym, it's the lifestyle. It's, it's the ambiance. You walk in one way, you come out a different way. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You continue to go through your day with that energy. That and um, I look forward to going there all the time. So I just, I'm just happy for you. I'm proud of what you built. And I, I know what's, you, what's coming is going to be bigger and better. You know, it's going to be bigger than Lifetime and all. I can see it. Like when you talk about franchising, I can already see that across the world. You know what I'm saying? So I'm happy happy I can have you on early because I like I have my women and all that stuff I do have high level minded individuals also high level individuals that's in entrepreneurism and doing the things all combined and that's you it's not only just being an athlete it's not only just being an entrepreneur but you got that mental understanding sometimes we just grab how you feeling today I'm ready for whatever I'm, mm. I'm going harder than mm. I ever did huh? we just had that connection real quick and we go you know what I'm saying so we got that same understanding of life 100%. put my back against the wall I want to see how far crush I can go up. yeah try to crush me yeah, I haven't been crushed yet. So when you got that mindset, yeah. it's a beautiful thing, bro. Bro, you you have to you have to appreciate the position that we sit in today in the, in the chairs because it's like not many people are willing to step outside what they're used to in their comfort zone right. and to be able to do the things that we do. Yeah, you know, and and once you understand that concept and go, damn, I don't want to work a nine to five job. Right. I need, I need to take things outside the box and do it completely different. That's when you get changed, right? You know, and that's where you feel as though that your tests are the pressure. When you can come across pressure and fight against it yeah. and beat it and you feel a little bit of like growth within it, that's when you know, like, you're like, yeah, I like this. Yeah. I want this. I want to get hit in the face. Right. And come back with something. I got to. You you want to feel that, 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 that heat, you know? Yeah. And so... It's all about, you know, these days, uh, and I talk to my team about this all the time, you know, it's it's about dealing with problems and having solutions to them. Right. You have to create yourself to be a problem solver because once you fix those things and you're coming up on top and you're beating all these necessary things that are so important, you're going to feel in yourself better because it's like, damn, I, I'm, I know how to do this. Right. No matter what you give to me, I'm going to fix it. Right. I'm going to turn it into a positive. For sure. And that's what life is about. It's a challenge. Mm -hmm. You want challenges in order to move forward and in order to show the rest that this is what it's all about. It's not just about working. Right. You want a challenge to be able to be 
victorious. Most definitely. In every aspect of what you're doing. Yeah. Some people, you know, like I always put an analogy of like people want to fight. They want to knock somebody out, but they ain't really trying to get hit. You know, like everybody want to, I can kill this person. Right. But are you willing to die? You yeah. know what I mean? Are you willing to go in that war and say, I could I could die today? Or you want to pick somebody, or oh, I could just grab him and break his neck? No, you want to, oh, I don't know if I get him. Let's mm-hmm. figure it out. That's the real warriors. That's the people that are known to the end of time, the Achilles and all these historical figures. They was willing to go against somebody that they don't know if they're going to win or lose, but I'm willing to go. That's how business takes place. I'm willing to put it all up. I can lose it, but I'm going to put it up because I think I'm going to win. Let's figure it out. Right. And then when you win, <laughs> or you got to go a little bit here, a little bit there, but I, I make relate. it on the other side. I you you. I can relate. That's what life is. You can either be a small fish in the pond. That's what I was. Right. I was willing to, willing to go up against the big ones. Yeah. The sharks. Most definitely. So. Now you a shark. Nah. And I'm I, a, I, I feel I, that. I, nah, I'm a whale. Oh, killer whale. I'm a killer whale. And blue right whale now. don't do much. He ain't going to kill nothing. <laughs> nah. I'm going to look good, black and white, but I'm going to chew your ass up. No homo sapien on that. But I'm willing to go to war with the dolphins, with the great whites. I'm a killer whale. Bro, I feel you, brother. Th- brother, that's why my team is so loyal to what we do. Right. I will go to war. I will go to bat for him. I will do whatever it takes. If somebody's messing up with something, I'm the first one to step in and be like, yo, get out. <laughs> right. Because you're going up against me. Right. Because I'm willing to take that role, bro. Yeah. I'm, re- I'm willing to take that, that that risk on everything. And I always have from the very beginning. I I, I made an obligation to myself. It's like, ri- it's like writing a contract to yourself on what you're going to do. Yeah. And part of that is I'm willing to take the risk mm-hmm. for everybody and everything. And I have. Right. And, I, and, and on next podcast you get me on, I'll yeah. explain more of the story. And it really, it's a movie what I went through in order to be where I am. And I'm grateful for those things that happened. Yeah. I'm not proud of them, but I'm yeah. happy I went yeah, you through gotta it. You got to do what you got to do. Sometimes you got to do what you got to yeah. do. You have to bend rules. Of course. The and gray area is where the braid is at. Exactly. And in those gray areas, and when you're bending those rules, you have to be willing to sacrifice and take those risks. Right. And I have every single step of the way, but the rewards are great. Of course. Yeah, so. it, it's part of life, man. So like I, like I said, man, uh-huh. I'm happy to have you here, bro. I see you almost Appreciate every day you, at the gym. It's Thank always you. love. So it's only right that I get your story out here and let people know that, you know, believing in yourself, working hard, never giving up and not giving a fuck will give you everything you want in life. Thousand. And you're an epitome of that. You Thank know what I'm you, saying? Sir. You live Appreciate a grandiose life because you put the energy into it. You just didn't sit back and wait for it to come to you. Nah. You went after it. For sure. So when you went after it, now let me stand on my trophy and put the head on the wall. Yeah. You're going to see that big line up there. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see your face on the wall. You deserve it. You're going to see that Lambo in your gym. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you walk in there, you do feel like I'm about to go, you know what I'm saying, to my, to my boxing match. I'm going to fight the game of life. And that's what we're doing here, man. Anything else you want to close it out before we get up out of here, man? Um, anything you got going on, you're trying to build, just give it off before we get up off here, man. Yeah, for sure, man. So, like, look, as far as building Boxer, you know, we, myself and Cammy and my team have built the brand up to where it is today. We've worked really hard to put it to where it is. But the most important thing behind it all is in order to achieve greatness or to be in a position where you never thought you once would be in, you have to believe fully in yourself and you have to align your values with your belief system. If this is not connected, it will not work. So you have to make sure you're for fully filled within yourself in order to move forward and in order to cater to others, which means get your value system, get your belief system, put that together, find your negatives, turn them into positives. As a man, you look at yourself in the mirror and you find out what's wrong. The day that you realize what you're doing wrong is the day that everything will change for yourself. You You have to take full accountability for your wrongdoings in life. If you do not, it will haunt you and it will never change. I had to do it. Otherwise, I would not be able to hold all the that I can hold today. Right. I would collapse, bro. For sure. And I would not be the person to be able to sit on a podcast with you and speak like this because I was never like this three years ago. Right. But now I am. Why? Because I decided to make those changes. I decided to align my value system with my belief system. I decided to go, you know what? I don't talk to people. I'm too up myself, bro. Like, I think the world owes me something. Nah, bro. Mateo, cut that shit out. You right. have to do that. You have to cut all the shit out in order to move forward. Right. Most Otherwise, you're going to hit 40, 50, and you never achieve what you really want to achieve. Right. So 
I'm just putting it out there because I had to do it for myself and I had the push from my partner, which I'm grateful. But if you don't have it, then you got to self-motivate yourself to get into that headspace to really lock in and do that. Yeah. Once you make those necessary steps, that's the beginning of where you're going to become great. Mm -hmm. It's not about the money. It's about who you are as an individual and how you grow because who you are inside and how you deliver it out is how you're going to build these relationships and networks and to be able to pivot and make these moves to where you want to be. Right. So without that, you're nobody. Facts. You know? So, but more importantly, bro, I, I appreciate you more than anything because you've been an OG member supporting Boxer. You've made great relationships. We are definitely putting on another car drive rally Most for definitely. Boxer. So you've been pulling that. out those whips. Oh, we're going to do that. We're going to do that for sure, for <laughs> but sure. But no, like we really, we really cherish and, 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 and honor the loyalty that you have brought to Boxer and to us and bringing, you know, multitudes of people. And, um, bro, you, you are the definition of, you know, what men should look up to in the industry and to listen to your podcast and take all the jewels that you're spinning out right. so they can apply it into their everyday lives. Most definitely. That's how I close it out. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. That's, That's what it's all about, man. It's Mr. Organic. Make sure you go to organiclifestyle.com, support the campaign. Believe in yourself like you believe in God. Never give up. Never give a f Remember, it's SRTF, from the seed to the root to the tree to the fruit. You got to keep it organic. Plant a seed today, you don't get the fruit tomorrow. Go through the journey, embrace it, good, bad, and ugly. Make it to the other side. Once you get that fruit, the people that help you cultivate that fruit, you give them the seeds. You don't give them the fruit, let they grow their own. That's how we eat forever. It's organically speaking, Mateo Boxer, I'm about here. Three of them.